Let's see. Batman versus Poison Ivy. Business as usual. Oh, good God! Well, we begin the second box set with the second Poison Ivy episode so far, and it looks like we're starting on kind of a whimper. To be fair, Eternal Youth is not a terrible episode, but it tells an unengaging story, making it very forgettable aside from a few small moments. Poison Ivy's plot is to get her revenge on corporate figures that have been involved in projects that damage the environment, and in the most horrible way imaginable, by turning them into trees. Okay, that doesn't sound too dull. But the way she goes about this is by bringing the rich people to her spa the episode's title is named after, and slowly exposing them to an enzyme that will result in said tree people. Despite how horrifying it looks, this transformation is reversed off-screen by Batman at the end, so there's no real sense of danger by the conclusion. Comparing this to Pretty Poison, that episode had suspense because a person's life was genuinely at stake, and Batman only had a certain amount of time to save Harvey Dent's life. We also got to see Batman do the detective work that resulted in saving Harvey and finding Poison Ivy, but here, that's not the focus. Batman does some figuring things out in this episode, it's just that it seems too easy. Anyways, Eternal Youth puts a lot of its focus on Alfred, which is nice, and he definitely has the best lines in this episode. One of my favorite exchanges is towards the beginning, where Alfred is going through Bruce's mail and says, Ah, it says here you just won $10 million. And Bruce just says, That's nice. Alfred takes Bruce's place at the Eternal Youth Spa along with a possible old flame that comes to visit him out of the blue, Maggie Page. Despite the fact that she's kind of spunky and makes Alfred exhibit different behavior than while around Bruce, Maggie isn't all that interesting and plays no significant role in the plot besides convincing Alfred to go to Eternal Youth. Since she's not mentioned at all before this episode or after, I wondered if she had any roots in the comics, but no such luck. The biggest problem with this episode besides how easily the day is saved at the end is that the story is very superficial on the thematic front. Really interesting character development could have been done by exploring how age can affect a person through the lens of Alfred, but we're given no sense that Alfred has any interest in recapturing his youth. The fact that Poison Ivy used the concept of youth to sell her spa seems arbitrary because she has nothing against the elderly, and she wanted to exact her revenge on Bruce Wayne, who's in the prime of his life. The way I can see the namesake of the spa having meaning is that Poison Ivy's victims will be preserved due to their transformation, but it's not like trees are eternal. So all Alfred really gets to do is say a few clever things and get under Poison Ivy's control. To be fair, this does lead to my favorite scene where Alfred puts plants everywhere in the Batcave, and what makes this great is Batman's dumbfounded reaction. Despite the fact that Alfred receives more attention, Batman is the one who has the emotional moments, such as when he finds that Alfred is missing, and when he sees what Poison Ivy has done to her victims. When Batman angrily calls Ivy a fanatic, I get the sense that at least the episode earned Batman's anger by establishing the warm relationship with Alfred towards the beginning, as well as from past episodes. But again, the easy wrap-up undercuts the impact of that moment, especially in repeat viewings. As for Poison Ivy herself, I like the way she's handled, especially playing on her backstory as a scientist, disguising herself as Dr. Demeter. That being said, I find it hard to believe that Alfred doesn't recognize her since he helped Batman with his investigation in Pretty Poison. I guess the whole glasses a disguise thing works for all people in the DC Universe. Another complaint I have with Poison Ivy is that she's a bit two-dimensional for my taste. I get that we're supposed to be agreeing with Batman that she's an eco-fanatic, but she seems to have no other purpose. Later episodes such as Harley and Ivy and House and Garden fleshed out her personality more while keeping the motivation established in these first two appearances. I do like that in this story Ivy compares herself with Batman and points out that they actually have quite a bit in common. This is why Poison Ivy is a mainstay in Batman's rogues gallery. Seeing as how this episode is kind of thin on story, I'll leave it at that. The animation this time around is pretty good, but not great. It was animated by the same studio that did See No Evil, and I thought that episode looked superb. Sadly, Batman himself isn't drawn as awesomely here. At times he looks too bulky, and I'm not a fan of how his face was drawn, but at least it looks consistent throughout the episode. However, Poison Ivy was treated much better, because whenever she's on screen, the drawing conveys the beauty that Ivy is supposed to have. I don't just mean that the way they animated Ivy is good for this episode, it's probably the best Ivy ever looks throughout the series, aside from when the character design has changed. I am curious as to why we don't completely see Ivy during the opening scene, since it's no real mystery that she's the villain this time around, but it does look cool in a few shots. Now that I think about it, my only real problem with the animation is how Batman looks, because Alfred is also well drawn, and his face is wonderfully expressive. 
As for the voice acting, Diane Pershing is once again the featured guest star, and if I remember correctly, I said that her performance in Pretty Poison sounded like she was still getting used to the character. Even though her performance this time around was improved, I still get the sense that she hasn't completely nailed Poison Ivy yet. To be fair, this is only her second time voicing the character, and later on, Diane Pershing is able to portray Ivy's personality in a way that seems effortless, which I think is vital to the femme fatale archetype. Ephraim Zimbalist continues to knock it out of the park as Alfred, so I'll move on to my final verdict. Eternal Youth is an episode that had the potential to be more interesting than it was, but it does have its moments. Poison Ivy has a decent presence, and the way she punishes her victims is definitely memorable. Overall, a decent episode, but not worth watching more than once, because there are better stories within the series that feature Poison Ivy, especially House and Garden. I rate Eternal Youth a 3.5 out of 5. Thanks for joining me once again, guys, and next up is the fan favorite, Perchance to Dream. It's been a while since I've seen it, so I look forward to going back and seeing what makes that episode so beloved. That being said, it might be that I review something else before then to shake things up a bit. Once again, due to my schedule, I can't be sure when the next review will be up, but it'll definitely be as soon as possible. Until next we meet, take care.